All right, Nightfall Wraiths. Uh, this is one of those instances where one of the key cards in our deck is actually not the champion. So Wraith, in this case, refers to the card Mist Wraith here. Two drop, two two with Fearsome. It's a little bit of evasion here. Then when it's summoned, it gives allied Mist Wraiths everywhere plus one attack. So you can only play three of an individual card in Rune Terra. However, there are other cards of the game that generate Mist Wraith. Wraith Caller is an Allegiance example of that. So Allegiance says when you summon this, if the top card of your deck matches this region, you get a bonus, which in this case summons a Mist Wraith. In the most recent set, they added the card Risen Mists here, which is a four mana burst spell that summons a Mist Wraith. Summoning a Mist Wraith at burst is really powerful in a lot of situations. It allows you to add to your board without passing priority. So for instance, this can let you add another unit to the table, pumping your existing Mist Wraiths as well, and then attack right away without passing priority. It also gives us the ability to summon a Mist Wraith as a blocker should our opponent be opening on attacks. Um, the base of this deck is mostly uh, Shadow Isles because we are trying to maximize our ability to hit the Allegiance requirement on Wraith Caller. We want this to summon a Mist Wraith as often as possible. That being said, we're playing Nocturne, a Nightfall Champion out of Targon as one of, out of uh, Call the Mountain as one of our champions. So we do have a few Targon cards in here in Diana as the second Nightfall Champion to help us control the board. And then Lenari Dustbringer in the one slot because this is just the best Nightfall enabler in the game currently. So let's go ahead and jump on into some games here with this and see how this mix feels. Twisted Fate, Swain, Gangplank. So probably like a budget version of Twisted Swain. It's just like playing Gangplank as an extra thing. Um, I'm going to mulligan these two. I'm going to keep this Bark Beast. I'm going to look for something to pair to sacrifice to Blighted Caretaker. So we can trigger a Bark Beast ideally. Stalking Shadows, excellent Nightfall Enabler. Let's just pick a follower out of the top cards of our deck and draw it and create an ephemeral copy of it. Powder Keg here, gonna make their next spell deal extra damage. It's gonna be a little bit worrying. So their archetype has a card called Make It Rain, which lets them... Uh, Let's them deal extra damage with all of their stuff. This, this is close, actually. Huh? The extra Mist Wraith here is kind of appealing to take. Yeah, I think I'm going to take Mist Wraith here. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and play the Ephemeral one here. It could be right to take Wraith Caller because it generates more card advantage. If they have Make It Rain, we get blasted here. Yep. So, seals three to all my stuff. This is why I played the Ephemeral one out. Wasn't expecting them to do that. I think I just passed for the time being and plan to use this as a Nightfall Enabler. Am I? Nah, I'll just play it out. I have a lot of units in my hand. might be too cheeky but it's fun so we're gonna do it get to summon this at burst speed and then combat resolves left to right so these will trade this will turn into a 3-3 and eat their 2-2 i'm all 
always up for a round or two. Who says I don't share? Go. So I think we play Mystery to start. And then we're going to play Diana out with Nightfall. And she'll get to hook Twisted Fate here. Okay. Not really interested in trading this for their 3-2 here, so I'm just going to pass. I think I am actually interested in trading these here. Because, like, with these Mistwraiths having Fearsome that I have, getting their three power blocker out of play has a lot of appeal to it. Do I just try and kill them? My mistresses are very spooky scary. Oh wait, this is still lethal, right? Ha <laughs> Nailed it. Their colors don't heal, right? It's a good, it's a good start. Yeah, yeah, the power of the burst wraith really showing there. Wouldn't killing their 1-1 one, one in response counter it? So, if I go to kill their 1-1, one, one, they get a chance to play more things. Whereas if I just say okay, everything resolves. So by just letting everything resolve, my opponent goes to 1 in faction in regions that can't heal. And I guaranteed kill them. So me responding to their thing is just objectively wrong because I have guaranteedly full. Keep risen, miss. Only a fool would enter battle unprepared. So, their factions play the 3 2 that gains extra toughness. So, I could play this out hoping to get an attack for three, but playing this out means they likely play the 3 2, which I then won't want to attack into because it'll have the bonus for this turn. So I think the opportunity cost of playing this means I lose damage most of the time. Yeah, it, re it really is, Violet Journey. You will, you will win a lot of games and feel very smart on average a lot of the time in this game if you understand the priority system. It's really well done. My spirit shines. Maybe Waffle, it depends on how much overlap they want to have between their factions. I think we're just blighted caretakering, right?
And then honestly, I think I'm going to Dusk Petal into Diana here. So Dusk Petal kind of allows you to convert spell mana into unit mana for Nightfall. I really think this, this is a really interesting way to like kind of do like ritual style effects that lets you cheat on resources in this game without them being as busted as they are in Magic, which is a good thing. Blighted Caretaker is very, very good. You are not wrong. Glad we didn't Wraith Call her last turn. Open on attacks here and see what they do. I agree that that attack seemed not great. Yep. Yep. Well, that happened. I believe Chosen of the sun. I believe a dev confirmed that um, it ignoring spell shield was a bug if I if I recall correctly They get to stun another thing here. Oh, they don't, right? Because this is just leveling up now. I mean, spell shield's playable. I don't know about insane. It's definitely playable, though. So, we can't beat a second copy of Judgment, so it's not worth talking about. Man, I'm really impressed that our deck got as close to winning this as we are after that, uh... After that Judgment. Judgment was, like, the only card that got them out of that there. 
just drawing. Like, their deck, their deck's got bombs in it at this point. And we've got, uh, Ladari Dustbringers. Can you, can you hear robotic children behind me? Should I close the door? Or is the RTX filtering them out? Yes. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it blocks them out, sometimes it... Misfortune Gangplank. I'm gonna bottom feeding memories here, I think. Hey, that's a great. Much better wind drop than Stiggy in here. Lucky you. I'm the last thing you'll see. Open wide, sugar. All right, make it rain, Daddy. Make it rain. Warning shot. You're gonna draw a card off my deck. Jagged Butcher deal. Dance is fine for me. It gives me a 3 3 and a 4 3, and then, like, I have Blighted Caretaker to hook this and finish it next turn. We'll play Onlooker here as a blocker so I don't take a ton of damage in combat. They attack with everything here. Leaving the two in back, that makes sense. So now we'll trade this off and then we'll take four down to 14. Wow, this works out really well for us. So I get to do this. Oh, I'm dumb. Now my bench is over full rate because they didn't attack with these. Wasn't counting on that. That's fine. We'll just eat, the, eat this so we get both the challenge units. Hopefully their make it rain rolls poorly here. Feels like a bacon. Oh heck. Oh heck. These are elusive, so I cannot block them. Because my board is not elusive. Decimate. Yikes. Going Diana into Nocturne this turn. For the Empire. Make the Empire proud. Moonlight floats the land in silver. And I have three points to reach here, technically. Ends here. Easy, tiger. They're going to five off of this. I think I think I just go ahead and pale cascade here to draw a card. Push some extra damage. So they're at three. 
I'm at eight. They've shown us decimate those. They're just like gonna like running decimate us. <laughs> uh. Nope, just did. Yeah, yeah, we had we had a drain to beat Decimate. They needed something more than that. Well, I mean, that make it rain wasn't lethal regardless, right? All right, Trundle Asol. I feel like there's been a lot less of this deck the more the latter season has gone on, and I feel like that makes sense. I feel like this deck was getting played a lot in relative to its power level. Let's some drum. They forced us to choose death or the blade. <laughs> it's our time. Oh yeah, maybe they were setting up for shark. I think like people people figured out how the aggro decks are supposed to work too as part of it. Like I think for example here we go Risen Miss this turn. And then next turn I'm gonna Wraith Caller, and then we're gonna get a big attack in. Well, there's a target card on top of our deck. We get avalanche tier. That's about to happen eventually, right? We've got six, six non-hits. I have one of, if one of them in my hand, can probably win this game if we hit there, but probably dead now. Pretty sure I'm throwing away a 4-3 to deal 6 here. I would be throwing away a 4-3 to deal an extra 4 here. It's so like if they went to 7 here, we could be in a good spot. that last turn and decided not to. So they go up to eight mana here, so they're going to put the pillar down this turn. If we don't miss on allegiance there, if we don't miss on allegiance there, we might have a shot because, like, it forces them. If we hit on the allegiance, it forces them to ice quake sooner or to uh, avalanche sooner, and then they don't have their big threat in play. We could maybe catch back up, like, puts all their sequencing a turn behind. A lot of the aggro decks in this game tend to have a lot of play in them against the sweeper decks, which I think is one of the reason 
but I think it's one of the reasons why the Aesol Trundle deck has been pushed pushed down in popularity a good bit, but our deck definitely is not not in that position. Our The size of our units are very bad against the deal too, and we're pretty obligated to flood the board in a lot of situations. Okay, mulliganing these two, looking for our three drop. Shen is a support aggro deck. No one drop out of them is great for us. And there's the Blighted Caretaker we're mulliganing for. The Super Mim. Thanks for the 20 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. We have Gaz. If they attack, I'm going to go ahead and block here so that way my Blighted Caretaker kills us next turn. Good deal. Alright, we got some wraiths here. Hmm. -mm. I just caretaker ASAP. I want to. I'm incentivized to use the blighted caretaker before my board is too wide. Because like if I start deploying mist rates, I'm not gonna have room to deploy these since I only have six things on my bench. So I like kind of want to save this till we get to a point where it can pull two things, but I also need to use it before my board gets too big with these. I've got your back. Uh, sure. Deal, deal arena. I mean, we're playing, we're playing Shadow Isles, which has a variety of deal ones in it. So they prioritize playing the three two to keep this thing not at one toughness, so it doesn't die to like you know a vile beast and to prevent the two damage on that attack. I don't hate that block on their part. Depends on, depends on the context of the hand. They're definitely on the back foot here, right? Like, they didn't have a one drop. I've played one, two, three on curve. I'm gonna pass for now. They're probably gonna attack. I think we want to play Wraith Caller this turn. I think I would prefer that they, like, hook this 4-3 rather than my Mist Wraith. I can go either way, though. Well, this isn't the blade. To the base. Although I guess playing this out would make this worse. If I would have played another 4-3 here. Spooky scary. How do I feel about offering Diana up as a sacrificial lamb? I think I like it. Find your own light I'm just gonna feed her to the dragon so my, my mistrates can get in. Aaron, thank you for the 53 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. can't block these if they block here here they die so they have to throw one of these in front of the four three Can you stomach this? and they go to two here which means that if this finds the drain beast they die my patience wanes
Or we could just try. Yep. Follow my lead. Is this deck reasonable? It's definitely the most reasonable mystery deck that we've played so far. I know we got beat up by the avalanches, but so far in the other matches, it's felt like, uh, felt like we've had a real good shot. Did he get to be as lucky as me? I mean, we had five looks at it. And five looks in a 30 card deck, 31 card deck. Yeah, yeah, we also weren't dead on board, so we had time to peel it too if we missed. Alright, let's see how this goes, huh? I think I think if you asked me to pick the best deck in the current format, it would be a toss-up between Sajani Gangplank and uh Twisted, Twisted Swain. I think would be my two picks for those. I guess Misfortune Scouts is pretty good too. Is Bilgewater busted? All three of those are Bilgewater decks, aren't they? Yes, Bilgewater's busted. God bless. Parlay. Twisted Swain's mostly about Swain though. Nah, it's about it's about all of it. I think I'm actually just playing Diana here and attacking to go ahead and get my my Nocturne leveling. Yeah, having having reach is very powerful. Agree agree with that sentiment. Got some real monkey business going on over there. Do I keep this alive with Pale Cascade? I think so. Or do I push damage? I could just push damage. I want to keep this alive. This is a lot of upside to keeping it alive. Feeding memories, copying this is great. Gutshot is one of their scariest cards. It is, isn't it? I think I'm come, come. killing this one here. Good one. 
one. And then if we're not super unlucky, we get to do this. Okay, and then we get to open on attacks for 10 next turn. What's our best draw? The burst speed rate spell? Oh, they have this idiot. That's super annoying. Huh? Yeah, I could do this, this. This is their Sajani turn, though, is the issue. That's probably still the right play, though, huh? If they have Sajani, we're just never going to get... We're just never going to deal damage to them again. Whoa, they don't have Sajani. That's really good for us. <sighs> That's annoying. Are they dead if they missed on that? I think they were dead if they missed on that, right? That's fine. We still got Dream Beast. We still got Dream Beast. They don't have they don't have life gain in their colors, right? Is that right? They don't have life gain. I'm going up to seven resources. We can go this into this and kill them next turn. Oh, Freljord has Innkeeper. Sure. They don't have they don't have burst speed though, right? So when I do this, this, they die. So their, their regions have life gain, but that archetype in general also doesn't usually play life gain, right? That's something we can know. So chat, chat's right, Freljord does have a smattering of life gain between heal pot and stuff like that. No wait, heal pot. Heal pot is Ionia, right? But their their archetype doesn't usually play the cards. Diana Jinx. I don't know what you're doing, opponent, but I'm into it. That's yeah, it's great. Revitalizing Roar? Technically correct. There are any non-region specific cards? There are not neutral cards in this game, thank god. You can mix and match regions however you want, any combination of two, but there are not neutral cards similar to Hearthstone. They like have Petal Diana and are unsure if they want to play her. Why do you say, thank God there's no region neutral cards? Because playable neutral region cards basically just go in everything, which makes gameplay real dry. Okay. So we're going to get to go this, into this, this. Mr. Ben and Watch, thanks for the seven months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. They're very 
pretty scary, chat. Yeah, they create they create very dry repetitive gameplay patterns very quickly. So they have one thing that can block a fearsome unit at the moment. It's this. still got these so next turn that's pretty good we can go dusk petal into nocturne this turn this deck this deck's a really good example of nocturne's base level card his front half is just really good and you don't need to be leveling him for him to be playable i think is a big a big takeaway from this deck i want to play diana just to have pale cascade of light no i don't want my bench to be full i don't think i'm pretty pretty sure i want to just risen mist next turn and then attack Although, with this attack, I can jump out of it, right? So that's fine. I can trade here even. That sounds great. I think going to eight's pretty safe, right? They've already played two Mystic Shots. Anybody think I need to jump block for three here? I don't think so. Sweet tricky aggro deck. I don't know how you beat the the Asol deck, but infinite sweepers. But the non sweeper matchups seem real good. If we high rolled on our mist wraith, or not low rolled on our mist wraith, we might have been okay in that match. Need to play more games there. Fearsome. Fearsome is such a powerful keyword. The nightmare never ends. The nightmare never ends. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Not being not being good against everything's usually a good sign. Start. So, endure aggro. What what do I want to keep? I go to bottom fading memories here. Sticky and onlooker is just an early thing to trade off. Seems fine. I think Doom Beast like drain and get some life back sounds good too, and we'll keep stalking shadows to enable it. That's a great pickup. Death or the 
death of the blade. This is uh, probably the best top deck in our deck there. Yeah, I agree. I agree, son. Unspeakable horror without nightfall. Deal. Results. Opponent making a small bit of a mistake there. They should have unspeakable horror before I declared attackers. They gave me a trigger on my nocturne they didn't have to give me. Piss that treasonous hearts. How defensive do I want to be here? I think kind of defensive. I'm gonna dusk pedal into Doom Beast so they can't attack with this. Again, I think it's pretty important to prioritize using Blighted Caretaker early in this deck because especially with Wraith Callers, your bench really fills up in the mid to late game. So you need to use this before your bench is full. Just like using this to get in a hit for seven and damage their Kalista here is like fine. Wow, their hand is like really bad, huh? I think I Wraith Caller rather than doing Mist Wraith into this. Everyone's a garden. Because uh, their archetype plays Fury in the North sometimes. Alright, they get to garden me back. So this will... They could kill my Mist Wraith. Or we could see them prioritize letting their Kalista attack. So they could, they could hook my two Kalista blockers here and push damage on the backswing. An aggressive Kalista level. Do I block with this to save eight points of damage? I think so. Because Kali's does link to this, so if this takes damage here, this will die. Kinda getting punished for not prioritizing unspeakable horroring this. This is the ephemeral one. I could have tried to unspeakable horror this, but I think that's wrong. Because if they have the sacrifice a thing, so what's it called? We get into trouble. Hey, look, it's only a nine nine. Meet 
destiny. I think it's pretty important that I kill this because it's going to get to... It's going to get to block my mysteries otherwise. So I think I Unspeakable Horrors their dome here to level Diana, which will turn her into a 3-3 three, three, and then these will trade. Well, Kalista has Black Spear as a spell. Champion spell, so... You're right that actual factual Black Spear doesn't see play, but they could have had it there because of that. The moon is our queen. The night, her kingdom! Staying at 10 means we don't die to atrocity here, which is nice. So I have 11 total mana. So I think that means we do this, this, uh, this, this, right? Oh, that's too many. I miscounted. I can do this, 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 though. I can also go this, this, this. Burst Wraith and Sickness kills them. Yeah, maybe. Night covers the land. Our time is now. Would we have would we have killed them there without that? But we have killed them there without the sickness. So if we didn't have the sickness, we would have gotten to go mist wraith. We would have gotten to go Mist Wraith into, um, what's his name? The, the four drop? Yeah, into Nocturne. I think, I think they were going to be dead regardless, right? Because all about, all about, I would have had enough lethal things. Pretty, pretty sure I had six lethal things and they would have only had three, three or four blockers. So I think I think we were good there even without the uh the blessed RNG. Come on, come on, get down with the Cygnus. Get a rematch here against Trundle Asol, eh? I'm gonna mulligan these other things that just die to their, their sweeper. This is actually a great curve here now in this matchup. Night flowers upon my blood. Okay, so with Spacey Sketcher here, I think I actually don't offer the trade because they're probably not going to have two things for me to hook with this anyways. So I think I just pass and then we go Caretaker or Keeper into Caretaker. Paint your feelings. That is the plan. And then even if they have Avalanche here, they still take four. If they don't have Avalanche, they take, uh, like, eight. There's the Avalanche. Means they're not ramping this turn, which is good for us as well.
humans make them flat! So I think we do this in Tanocturne. Pretty sure we just do this. If they want to eat this here, they take five. Need to just push damage for sure. I ordered this last, so that way if they block either of these, this gets bigger before it hits them. The fact they prioritize killing my mist right there should mean that they don't have another avalanche, so that's nice for us. Stalking shadows, along with some doom beasts, could definitely be the reach we need to close this game out. Oh, actually, was I supposed to take the Cursed Keeper there? Maybe. I don't know, four points of reach is kind of appealing. Doesn't get blown out by Ice Quake, which is nice. I play around Ice Quake here and just open attacks, right? Pandasaurus, thanks for the 27 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. I just pass here. I don't think I want to play the ephemeral one out for no value. Star shaping is very good, chat. so offensive <laughs> it's so it's so offensive <laughs> uh. game 10 is such a beating So they, they didn't play out the 10 drop. Okay. I think I... I think we're still just attacking, right? I feel like Revitalizing Roar is a card I could envision seeing an update.
The fear the fearsome's not lethal, pray wait. Why why do you think it's worthwhile giving up my 2-1 to play a 4-1 fearsome there? Can you explain? Because I don't understand why that's a good play. Yeah, but it's just gained like casual 20 this game. So they get to level Orion Sol here, and then next turn I can no longer. I won't. Because Orion Sol is leveled, I can't play these out with Fearsome in between and do anything very useful with it. I think we're just done here. Yeah, I feel like that's probably, that's actually probably, um, My does that, does that make the card unplayable? I don't know if it makes it unplayable or not, but re revitalizing Roar not working with champions could probably be, is probably the balance it needs. Maybe that, maybe that makes it not good enough. Maybe you make it cost less mana if it does that. Because, like, it could still be good with Invoke cards to give you 10 at that point. But, like, non-champions just don't do that much. I like this. I'd love a Gardener to pair with the Keeper, but the rest of the scene's reasonable. Hey, thanks for the 22 months, Gundam. I appreciate that. Hope you're staying safe out there. So I want three draws to find our ideal three draw. Peaceful. Once. It's our time. This card. This card in a neat way is kind of like make it rain insurance, which is nice. Okay, now with this play, I think I play Bark B, so that way if they want to eat this, I get a 3 3. gonna pedal into Diana here I think So them blocking here makes their make it rain slightly better, but that's fine because it's pretty likely to hit this. This is a great pickup because it's going to enable our nightfall next turn elegantly. Giving this vulnerable to forest blocks with Cursed Keeper could also be really good next turn. Howdy, Logan. My patience wanes. Packed him good. Sure.
sure. I think Jack's just a good card in you, Endo. A 5-6 stat line for a 5-6 stat line for 5 mana is like a really big boy. Yeah, you don't want to class me. Oh, I guess if this makes this vulnerable, this doesn't technically trade with it, right? I'm actually gonna give this. I'm gonna give this actually. Maybe it should be this because I could trade. I like that if I do this, I guess it's losing the power regardless. There's there's a lot of decisions with this card and how you want it to line up into Fearsome. Now that this is vulnerable, I can order this first so it'll die on this, which will then make this a 3-3. Three, three. So we're gonna get to crack in for a lot of damage here. We have guaranteed seven on the Fearsomes. That's actually a very good pull out of our deck. They uh, got it after our Mist Wraith had powered it up too, which sucks. He's got to offer this trade. This isn't ephemeral, right? No. You got legs. Use them. Yeah, Wraith plus Beast next turn will be decent. We're also getting like, like this is going to turn into a 4-3. This is going to turn into a 3-3. So like, we've got a good, good, good board presence here so far. There's so Johnny. Like their deck hasn't been working very well. Their Sajani and Gangplank are still only one out of five. So like we're still pretty far off of them getting too scary. Well, they're not playing the typical list, huh? They've got plunder and stuff in their deck. It's a little atypical from a lot what a lot of the uh, this archetype's been doing. Giving this vulnerable means I can it keeps vulnerable permanently, which is nice. God, they drew a second mist wraith of ours. That's such a beating. Read. Open wide. Get to play this. We have a good open attacks. Stop stealing my stuff. It's mine. This card's really good on like turns three, four for us, but as you can see, like I was mentioning earlier, our bench just fills up so quickly. We have decent open attacks here though. We get to pull this here. And then they get to block one and then block another. They're, they're technically dead to open. That was cheeky. They made the ephemeral sailors so that way they could uh, get in. Definitely opening on attacks. They're not dead anymore though, right? They'll get to go block. Yeah, they're not not dead, but close. Dead or dead or near enough. That's supposed to be my trick, opponent! No recourse. Hold it, sweetheart. It's supposed to be my trick. Credit denied. Hey, Swim. Thanks for the raid. Hope you had a good stream today. Welcome to folks that are coming over from, from Swim's channel. If you're not familiar with my content, my name's Jeff Hoagland. Howdy. I stream full-time here on Twitch, do mostly card game and strategy games. 
do a lot of Magic the Gathering, traditionally speaking, but I picked up Runeterra in the last few months, and I really love it. So I've been doing a mix of that in with my Magic stuff as well. Do uh, pretty much daily Runeterra content these days. At least one to, one to two constructed decks. Dying slowly with the 13-month reset. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. We just take the hit here, probably, huh? We're taking damage regardless. I think I like passing, because they're probably going to shark us, right? Alright. They took more of our stuff, but they didn't shark us. So, like, glass half full? Do we open on Caretaker next turn? Probably depends on what else they play out here. If they pass, do we open on Caretaker? Yes. I think the answer is yes now. That makes the answer yes. We were peaceful once. Zip, take the card or copy it. It takes it, but it also takes it from the bottom of your deck, so the cards it's taking, you weren't going to be drawing anyways. Everyone's a garden. Like most most games of Runeterra, you don't see the entirety of your deck. So the difference between taking or copying is pretty negligible. Mike, I'm about to get... One of the other things that's nice about uh, NAB is NAB explicitly does not take your champions. I think we're just playing these out and trying to kill them, huh? Like, this is fearsome. These will be fearsome. They have one fearsome blocker. Okay, so Gangplank doesn't matter because I'm currently hooking both their Fearsome blockers, right? So I think I think I just deploy another Fearsome unit here, and then we can challenge this and this, and then we have three things they can't block, to hit two of which hitting is lethal. So this has to kill two of my things. It needs to be like a Make It Rain that high rolls. Think they're think they're just dead. Down and down to the very scary wire chat. He's very scary. Look at him. He's coming for you. You're sleeping over here, holding your stuff. He's getting ready to jump. Very scary. These things are going to have type lines on them. Is this thing like an owl? Is that what it is? It looks like it's got talons of some sort. Like some kind of demon owl with the eyes going on. I love how there's the timer here in the artwork too, so you don't miss it. I actually don't have juice box on this loadout, which might be a pun. I have some Bezos. Thanks, Pile Q. I really appreciate that. Hope you're staying safe out there. They might have DC'd. I think they might have DC'd when we played the third fearsome. Alright, go. That's de definitely what happened. <laughs> Bad. Had enough of RBS. You know, there was a full screen art. Yeah, the, the artwork and the IP in this game is gorgeous. Basically, every card, if you click on that little eye underneath it, it'll full screen it for you. They make beautiful desktop backgrounds, too, BT, by the way. Got my, my, my boy Zap here, Zap Spray Finn. 
No, I minimized you so everybody could look at my boy. Come on, Runeterra. How you doing? We're sneaking in Morrowind today. I was thinking about it, but uh, we just had a really giant host from Swim. So if some of those folks hang out, I think I'm going to do a third Runeterra deck instead. Lulu Zed. So something aggressive. I think I'm supposed to full mulligan aside the Cursed Keeper looking for Bladed Caretaker. It's one of our best starts in this matchup. It could be right to keep Bark Beast with that in mind though, because Bark Beast Caretaker Gardener is like pretty good. Yeah, I'm just going to mulligan these two and keep one, two and hope to find the three. It might actually be wrong to play Bark Beast out on one here because if my opponent has the Challenger, I'm actually going to skip attacking in case they're being silly and they didn't play their Challenger because they go Challenger into two drop support unit. I get into a lot of trouble. So unfortunately, don't have enough resources to Shadows and Gardener this turn. So I think I'm just going to play another Keeper out. And we'll go ahead and smack them for two. Very unlikely that they block these since they make a... That tasted purple. Two free points in. There's... There's the Fleet Feather Tracker, which I assume is going to kill this. Just going to go ahead and pass for now, I think. See what they do. You're covered. Everyone's a garden. I think a caretaker on defense. If I caretaker on defense, do I lose the sapling or do I lose the 4-3? Does anybody know? I'm actually not offhand on that interaction. I lose the 4-3? All right, we're just going to pass then. Losing, losing the 4-3 is not appropriate. Play triggers happen, then death triggers happen. Yeah, that makes sense. We're going to take a pretty hefty hit here. Oh, I would have had, we would have had plenty of room on my bench, right? Because this replaced itself plus three. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's right to defensive there. The end result there is about the same anyways, right? There you are. Yeah, I would have had enough room because it dies, they come in, and then it slides in off to the side. I'm not sure that that's the correct play, even knowing that they live. So we have three challengers here now, which is nice. Probably going to send Diana into Flower Child and these two ones into here. I want to put Diana into Flower Child here because this way, if my opponent Ranger resolves... Um, my Diana will get to live through combat. Ranger Resolve would make their things take one less. So if I like hook a hook a three two, oh, I guess I could. I guess I could do this, huh? 
That still doesn't matter. I probably want to kill Flower Child before it grows up too big. I think we, I think we want to do that. Leave my 2-1 back as an extra blocker since they have two threes that could just eat it. Maybe I'm supposed to not attack with the 4-3-2 because Lulu just bounces off of it. No closer. Twin Disciples could technically get us here, but that's usually not a card that they play. Usually it's like Ranger's Resolve or um, Ranger's Resolve or Repulse or the combat tricks that the opponent's archetype generally plays. That was definitely the best sequencing to play around Resolve there. Alright, so we've got Blighted Caretaker to stay alive, and then hopefully our Mist Wraith plan can help us, uh... I haven't played any Wraiths yet this game, right? Yeah, this might unfortunately be a defensive mystery <laughs> turn. Next turn, we can Blighted Caretaker this. Everyone's a garden. Help Picks makes this tricky, though. They get a free barrier now. When Lulu is leveled, not opening on attacks is so brutal, but I need to get Caretaker down here to get some of the board in check. They're protecting Lulu. Okay, I think them protecting Lulu is kind of okay for us. It's better than them protecting this here, hopefully. We're in a great spot, but definitely not out of it just yet. I think I offer up letting them eat Mist Wraith with Lulu, because they're going to eat a 4-3 regardless. I just need to push as much damage as possible here. all traded yeah i don't think we really have wiggle room to play around stuff here so definitely just on the space jam plan hope they don't have it yeah yeah the help picks lulu levels up really easily and then the help picks really lets you control the game with your more aggressive deck between doling out barriers and vulnerable Yeah, fake eye. Fake eye's real good. Yeah, this card's great. They're playing Zed too, right? Yeah, this card. This card on curve after Lulu or Zed oh, all seem very reasonable. Now the question here is, can we get out of this turn with our? Can we get out of this turn alive with our fearsomes? I think so. Because next turn, if we can do things Stiggy and Stiggy, and we might be okay here. We will resist. Do I want to beat Repost? That's what I gotta. That's what I asked myself. But I want to play around here. Do I want to beat? So, in a position like this, they could have Repost to kill me, but next turn I would like to try and set up to deal le lethal with my Fearsome unit, and I think my opponent is more likely to have a... Uh, they are more likely to have another large unit that can block my Fearsomes than they are to have a Repost here. So, again, Twin Disciples isn't a card they generally play. 
They likely have something because of the block last turn. What block? What what block they have? Do you think telegraph something? I don't remember a block that really stood out to me. Okay, I think I'm supposed to not play around to plus three, and I'm supposed to just hope to kill them next turn. Obviously, we could die here, but I think the play to win line is hoping they don't have it. Yeah. And again, like situations like this where you die, sometimes you're just gonna die. Game theory, optimal play doesn't mean you always win. Putting the Lulu with the barrier. If we have anything that deals one, they lose the Lulu. Um, yeah, I guess that's true. But no, Rapaz doesn't play around that to Card Cesar. Because the way, the way the stack works, that does not signify. Because if they have a barrier and I put a thing on it, there's no point for them to repost in between my damage. I think they were just taking a defensive block there because they didn't want to take a bunch of damage. So you're incorrect that that's indicative of them having a thing. Yeah, repost, repost doesn't save Lulu from one damage file in that instance. So I don't think that's a good read. Another Lulu to Whimsy with. Well, Whimsy doesn't play around anything there. In fact, not blocking plays around Whimsy getting rid of one of my Fearsome. So if you put them on Whimsy, it's right to avoid it. Orion Saul. Probably want to be aggressive. I'm going to mulligan. I'm going to keep one Caretaker. I'm going to look for a uh, two drop. Is it possible we want Atrocity? Maybe. Maybe. No, Atrocity's a Shadow Isle spell. Raise your weapon, Sunwood. Devotion to battle. I'm just doing this and then playing Diana to challenge this. Any act of heresy will be punished. Night descends. Can play this one out here. It could be right to hold this to enable nightfall on these, but I kind of like giving this 2 2 this turn and being aggressive. The true vagabond. Thanks to the brand new tier one sub. I appreciate that. Welcome to Oglandia. Well, that could have gone better. Not quite sure what they're doing. I guess they're more unit based. I saw Orion Sol and I was kind of expecting them to be more controlling, but maybe they're just like playing units on curve and ramping up. Or not ramping in these factions, but just trying to play units on curve. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that we beat that one yet. I guess, I guess we Nightfall Nocturne to trade for it next turn. Wow, just Stone Cold nothing? Alright, deal. We take, we take those. Unfortunate that we don't, uh, we can't, uh, make this small enough to not trade with Nocturne. Impossible. Uh, definitely have to take that trade there. Hey, that's the kind of card that could definitely steal this game from our opponent making a bunch of big things. Yeah, I think I think Dragon's deck is probably accurate. We're, I think we're done. Let's move on to the next one. Sometimes they have your number. Yeah. 
Yep, I agree. I disagree that it is worth sacrificing allegiance odds, and that is not why and that is why I'm not playing it. Like hitting hitting with Wraithcaller. I think it's fine to play a different deck. Why would I surrender? Because I felt like I did not have a chance to win. What do you think? What has to happen in that game there in order for me to win from that position? Can you describe it to me? The, what's the likely what's the likelihood of winning that game in my opinion it was incredibly low or close to non-existent your opponent could draw a land and unfortunately does not happen here yeah I don't, I don't think we were beating the board for people that aren't familiar with the second dragon my opponent played out last game when I conceded, it gives them a random dragon every time one of their fury creatures eats one of my things, and they had two very hungry dragons in play ready to eat my stuff. Yeah, the two the two dragons they had in play alone were literally enough to beat us. We definitely want to start the turn by attacking here, because they're a make it rain deck. Would not be surprised to lose my board here to this. Yep, yeah, never not. The deck list is on the screen. I'm just gonna time you out for being lazy. Streamer! You could have played around it with the cards that aren't in your deck, streamer. Why why you quit, streamer? The cards that you don't play where you're out, streamer. Oh, Twitch chat. Oh, Twitch chat. Gosh, if only, if only there was some kind of command I took the effort to update where even people on mobile could find my deck list. If only, if only there was some place that made that possible. Maybe someday someone will invent such a thing. The classic one, two, three, four, float five, rudation on six curve. Yeah, right? I think we copy this and we go like Doom Beast into Diana here. Can just make, make it rain. Why not drop the keeper before he pops you? That's a good thought. Yeah, I think that's a good. I think that's a good suggestion. It's probably a better line. Force them to have to risk giving us a four three. Yeah, I like that, Ray Yankee. That's actually a good question. Does the does the uh, Rune Terra extension show the Rune Terra deck list on mobile? The Magic extension I have shows it on mobile, but I'm not sure if Rune Terra is the same. Yeah, they probably followed after Swim hosted, and I'm sure now that I was very mean to them and expected them to like look up my deck list before criticizing my play, they unfollowed and left the stream, but that's okay. I'd rather have a lower viewer count of slightly higher average quality viewers than Someone's, someone's, someone's single view isn't really worth much money. Any money, really? Fractions of a penny? RQR Master X85. Thanks for the 15 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. How will you get subs if you hold your viewers to such high standards? Yep, something like that. Kind of run out of gas here. Got a lot of cards in hand, but two of them are just these pedals at this point. play this out it's ephemeral but that ephemeral is going to go ahead and turn this into a 3-3 three, three. it also keeps their swain at home for the turn which is nice hmm 
There for my monthly time out. What's going on, Meebzol? Thanks for the third of your. I appreciate that. Welcome back. I think we're just doing this into this and like hoping it's good enough. We can rip, we can rip wing and maybe have a shot, but. Nice single view is worth a lot. No, the sub icon next to your name is worth a lot. Your view, not quite as much. I appreciate you all the same though, Bunch Worthy. To this we'll take two draws at harrowing but even honestly even that's probably not enough right okay it's an okay one we find a uh a wraith caller here maybe when i get back in it you have a deck for me to build tell me all about it shark me daddy Okay, that's step one. Don't call it a comeback. They have leveled Swain here, which uh, stuns my back row stuff. Alright, step two, didn't brick on allegiance. After the Alright, and then our best draw here is the burst rate spell. The burst ray spell could theoretically be lethal, depending on what their other cards are here. Stalking Shadows Riptide Rack. Sounds good, Percy. Pretty pretty sure. Pretty sure we open attacks. And yeah, yeah, we could fading memories the Riptide Rex if they take a hit here in combat. Justify yourself. Justify yourself. Uh-oh, they might not be taking damage, chat. They might, they might not be taking damage. Because they're going to trade for the caller instead of the 6-2, they probably have a deal to. This the deal to deal one. So this shark's ephemeral, but it's going to kill Swain and deal five damage to their dome. And then we do have a cheeky harrowing in our deck still. They have another deal three. Well, poop. All right, so we just need to draw Doom Beast, chat. We've been calling out our best possible top decks. Let's just draw Doom Beast. Is that dead on board? I think that's dead on board. This is seven, eight, nine. Not quite dead on board. Boat. Oh, 
Could you have waited till after combat to painting memory there? No, their shark was gonna die. Yeah, I was blocking, I was blocking my 6 2. This was fine. Uh, pretty typical aggro deck. Kind of reminiscent of... Um, kind of reminiscent of... Kind of the Lulu Demacia decks in a lot of ways, I think. Um, very straightforward, linear. Has a little, a little bit of Challenger in Blighted Caretaker to interact with the board a little bit while, while you go, but... As like that last game showed, we do really play through our cards and run out of gas. Is Pale Cascade better than Duskbringer? No, this card's very good. This is the this is the best Nightfall enabler in the game, and it's not particularly close. So cutting our best Nightfall Nightfall enabler and um, adding more Nightfall doesn't sound doesn't sound great, man. That person's username has the word unhinged in it. And I have to assume that unhinged is what you would have to be to like get timed out in a Twitch chat and then hang out for another 10 minutes. This is not an airport. You do not have to announce your departure. Don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out. I promise you that if what's on your TV isn't making you happy, there's a button that changes the channel. So rather than shouting at the TV like someone who's unhinged just change the channel next time i wasn't going to unsub yeah you're not even subbed <laughs> you're not you're not even subbed mm. Mm, wasn't going to unsub not sub weird weird how that works never never change twitch chat never never change Well, let's sub and curse your family. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, what are we doing?